So Superman Earth 1 came out in 2010, Batman Earth 1 2012. They better pick up the pace here, because I don't want to, to be 2014 before we get another one of these. The laser is cause I like sci-fi. Lazy 99 I am a Batman fan And I'm a Canadian man I do top 10 lists And I eat ketchup chips Welcome to another Laser Dude 99 video. Today we're looking at Batman Earth 1. This was written by Jeff Johns and art was done by Gary Frank. As we uh, saw with Superman Earth 1 early on, uh, the Earth 1 series is about, it's basically the ultimate versions of DC characters, you know? A new refreshing take not tied down to any continuity of past Batman books. Restarting it all and starting from scratch. So the Earth 1 book, of course, is the origin of Batman and how he becomes uh, Gotham's protector. So, Bruce Wayne in this, let me just say, is handled very differently. Now, we've had times when Bruce Wayne has been new to the game. But this, he feels really new to the game. Like... This does not feel like a Bruce Wayne that has gone all the way around the world and trained with the best of best and has put, peaked his body to the human perfection that we all know. In fact, the only one it seems that he's trained in, under in here is Alfred. And in this story, he's actually not has been he hasn't been training to fight all of crime. All he's been doing is training so he can bring down the person who he thinks is responsible for his parents' death. So, of course, this, we all know the story of Batman. His parents were shot and killed right in front of him as a young boy. And he was put under the care of Alfred. And he grows up and wants to enact his vengeance upon the mayor of Gotham, the Penguin. Or, of course, Mayor Oswald Cobblepot, as he is referred to in here. So, I'm going to start with the biggest... I'm just going to talk about the biggest changes that they've made to Batman's lore in this new Batman universe in this book and uh, talk about if I like them as much or not. Now, I'm going to talk about the biggest one, Alfred. Alfred is the biggest change in this book because he's not exactly the loyal buffalo, so... Oh, I'll cancel the pizza. Oh, jeez, cannot believe I just quoted Batman and Robin. No, you see, Alfred in here, they really take, like, it's always been hinted at in Batman comics, not hinted, but said that Alfred has worked in the military. He was a military doctor. And so he, you know, that's always been a big thing of his. But in here, he's really military. I mean, like, straight up hard arse. I mean, yeah, and um, he's, he's... He only says he's a butler because when he's given custody of Bruce Wayne and he's like, look, I can't be a parent to this guy. I can't be a parent to this kid. And he's like, well, it's either this or he's going to a foster home. So when Bruce says, who the heck are you? He says, I'm your butler. You know, that's, that's what he says. Basically to say, I'm going to take care of you, but I'm not going to be a parent. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be a parent for you because I can't do that. And uh, he's totally, like, let's just say there's a part in this, which is probably my favorite part of the book, where he literally beats the crap, well, not fully, but he, he beats up on Bruce, punches him, kicks him around a little bit. This is the gosh darn Alfred! Man, you have no idea how long I've been wanting to say that after reading this. 
But yeah, it's basically that. He's he's really uh he's really into it and uh he's really a tough, tough uh guy and you really get to see Bruce uh grow up pretty strong and it, uh, uh next though I'm not I'll get to Bruce later. Uh, I want to talk about the next big change, Harvey Bullock. You know, Harvey Bullock is uh, we all love all Harvey Bullock from comic books to the animated series. Harvey Bullock has always been the lovable but a little on the heavy set side of things when it comes to the DC universe. You know, he's he's a little bit on the heavy set. He's but he's a seasoned old cop. In here, he's a big departure from the original character, but in a good way. In here, he is a former TV cop. You know, he was still a cop, but he had like a he was on a show like Cops where he did all this stuff and there was a camera crew following him wherever, so he's a little bit of a fool of himself, a little cocky, and also a little not really sure what he's going to get when it comes to Gotham City. He's basically just come to Gotham because he wants to get his, his show has been cancelled, so he wants to get his name back on the high end of things. Uh, so he wants to solve the Wayne murders. So that's why he's here in Gotham. And the thi the big twist on this is kind of a double play is the big twist against Gordon. Because, you know, from all encounters of Gordon, he's always been the good cop. You know, no matter what, he's always been the good cop that will never be on the tank. In here, Gordon virtually, except, you know, without the money, but he's virtually in the mob's pocket. They virtually got a hold on him. And so, you know, there's a part in here where Bullock tries to arrest one, someone, but Gordon won't let him. Or, you know, you know, just, and it really seems like Gordon is, Gotham has come and taken its toll on Gordon, and he, and he's beaten to the ground. Um, his, Gordon's wife is dead, and the only one he has in here is Barbara. And it's, and it's tough, you know, it's tough for Gordon. And, um, it's, it's a different take. This is the thing that you will see in this book. Everything's different, but more or less familiar. You know, uh, Alfred is very different from his original comic book counterpart, but it's familiar. He's in the same role, but his character is really different. Same with, same with Harvey Bullock. But the thing is, there's stuff in here that will show stuff that maybe Harvey Bullock will kind of end up into the more char like character we know. I don't want to give anything away. Uh, but, you know, there's stuff in here leading up, and all the stuff with Bullock is great. Um, I was a little, you know, I was a little hesitant against, you know, um, uh, Commissioner Gordon kind of being in the mob's pocket at first. And I still kind of am. I like to see my Gordon to be the guy who'll, who'll, you know, push on through adversity and all that. But he becomes that kind of guy at the end of this book. Lucius Fox, I just want to talk about quickly... Uh, he's he's going to be taking a role in this more like he did in Batman Begins. The only difference is Lucius is basically a kid. I mean, he's a teenager. He's not even, you know, he's not, he, he's just up and coming himself in his field. And Bruce finds him and asks him to work on, all he really wants is him to work on a line launcher. But you can tell later on that Lucius is going to be involved in the story. Uh, very, he's going to be a big part of it. Because he's gonna, he's gonna be, a, you know, the one that's gonna help Batman with his, with his uh, arsenal, and I, I think that might be. That's gonna be interesting to see further down the line. Um, Barbara in here, we don't get too much of her, but every time we see her, we see that she's just, she's a nice girl uh, that can take care of herself in the tough situations, um, and is just really compassionate character. So you know. Barbara's just a great character, and she's handled well in here. Now he gets a Batman, because even though the Penguin's really in here, he's not... It, I, he's just in here, and, and it's not too much of a fresh take on the character. He's a little bit disgusting, and he's a little bit of a... You know, you know the umbrella's in here, and that's kind of cool, but... Um, besides that, um, there's nothing too much. This, there's nothing... The Penguin's not that different. You know, I've seen the Penguin like this in regular comics before, so it's not too different. 
you know, nothing much to really talk about. But Bruce is different. I don't even fully know how to explain it, how they can make Batman and take his character, make it so different, and yet, as I said before, it's so different, but it's familiar. The biggest, there is one big problem that I have with this, though. You see, in this story, Batman, as I kind of said earlier, he's not actually dedicating himself to fight crime. I, I don't know what he's been doing with his whole life. Like, it's, it says that Alfred has trained him. So, okay, he's been training for a few years. But, you know, just in martial arts, I doubt Alfred has much detective skills or, you know, technology, I don't know, whatever, you know. I'm not sure how much Alfred can really be teaching him, you know. And uh, by the end of this, it's by the end of this where he realizes he's not, like, his, his parents' crime was just a random crime. It wasn't anything big on the totem pole like he thought it was going to be. Uh, and uh, so he, he dedicates himself to fighting crime. But this is kind of where I kind of prefer year one to this, where... Batman came to Gotham in year one solely for the purpose of ridding Gotham of crime. At the very least, organized crime. You know, he's waging his war on crime. And here, it feels a little odd that he would train for so many years and do all this stuff for so many years just to find one guy. You know, you're Bruce Wayne. You have millions of dollars. If he was really out to get his parents' killer... Couldn't he have just hired a mercenary or something? I mean, he's rich enough that I think he could probably get his hands on some mercenary. And if he didn't want him killed, you, you could just say that or whatnot. You know, it feels a little odd that, you know, he was going to all this trouble just to get revenge on his parents' killer. Now, that's, to be fair, that is Batman's whole mission, for, you know, that's, that's his whole mission emphasis is because his parents died. But, you know, I just felt if he was just doing all this just to get his parents killer, there'd be easier ways, you know? I just prefer a Batman who's all out for his war on crime. But, you know what? He, that's what he is when he ends on this book. And you know what? He, for the most part, uh, he's handled rather well. We get to see his anger, his rage, his drive, his passion, and even his failures. Because, as I say, like before, there's stuff like, like when you look at Frank Miller's Batman Year One, and Batman goes out and like that scene where there's these three kids on the uh, fire escape and he fights them and he just and he and he fights them and he beats them. And he's like amateur, looky amateur. But you know, you still look at that as like, dude, you did a good job. And here he does stuff where he basically screws up. Big time. And he'll be like, oh, shoot. And, it, like, he'll, he runs into situations without fully thinking. Um, and he's just, he's not, doesn't have as much tactics. He's not the Dark Knight as we know him. But you know what? He's starting out. This is his, these are his first times. It's a little understandable for him to mess up, for his gadgets not to work, and for his, you know, his entire crusade to not go exactly the way he plans from the get-go. Especially since we've established that he's not experienced as he is in, uh, in the regular Batman continuity, where he's honed his body to perfection. And here he's just, who knows how many fighting styles Af Alfred has taught him. And he seems to be an okay detective in here, but, you know, he's, uh, I don't know how he's studied criminology and all that. But, you, you know, like, we, we, don't really, we don't really know what he's gone through in this. Where the other one, it felt like he's gone through so much. Uh, but by the end of this, I wanted to continue. Just like, I, when it comes to the Earth Ones... I'll admit, even though I like Batman more than Superman, I, I've enjoyed Superman Earth 1 more than Batman Earth 1. I don't know why. They're both really good books, and um, I think both of them, I think the Earth 1 are, I think these Earth 1 stories are really good reimagining of the characters that I've ever seen. Like I say, it's different, but familiar. I'm going to give Batman Earth 1... Seven and a half out of ten. 
It's a very good book and really worth your while if you're into Batman. So remember guys, I'm LazyDude99 and if I don't like it, it's not worth it. See you around. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel. And wait for more coming soon.